I've said in many videos that based on my professional experience, I've figured out how your brain must work to do the things it does. Now it's time for me to show you the evidence. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. A lot of effort has gone into our open source brain simulator projects, which I'll be using throughout this series for simulations and demonstrations. So here's the big question. How does a brain with a bunch of squishy neurons create intelligence, thought, and experience? We have billions of neurons in our heads and plenty of observable behaviors, but how do we relate and reconcile the two? I wish the answer was simple and obvious, but it's not. That's why I'm creating a series of videos to explain it. But stick with me, it's worth it. I'll address topics from neurons and transistors to consciousness and free will and beyond. And if your comments raise new questions, I'll tackle those too. Why should you care? No matter what your background, AI, neuroscience, or just general curiosity, there's something here for you. If you're in AI, you can learn lots of things to make AI better. For example, brains use a lot less energy than AI. Brains can learn with a single explanation. And humans usually have common sense. Along the way, I'll try to correct several false assumptions, which most AI people get wrong. If you're in neuroscience, neuroscience has made remarkable progress in understanding the human brain at multiple levels, molecular, cellular, and systems, but it is still far from a complete picture. In this series, I'll make it more complete. We understand a great deal about neurons and synapses, how signals travel, and how certain brain areas support functions like vision or language. I'll put many of the pieces together where our understanding remains fragmented and incomplete, especially when it comes to higher order processes like consciousness, creativity, or common sense reasoning. We know what parts of the brain are active during specific tasks, and we can trace some neural pathways. But we often don't know how the pattern of activity gives rise to subjective experience or intelligent behavior. In short, neuroscience has matched much of the brain wiring and chemistry, but the algorithms of the mind, how exactly the brain computes thought, meaning and intention, that's the contribution I'd like to make with these videos. And just as with AI, I'd like to correct several assumptions and misconceptions which many neuroscientists get wrong. If you're simply curious about us as humans, understanding how the brain works is like learning the operating system for you. Your thoughts, emotions, memories, habits, and decisions all stem from brain activity. Knowing even the basics can help you make better choices. It can also make you more mindful about how your brain can be influenced or tricked, such as by biases, illusions, or misinformation. Beyond the personal understanding, the brain also deepens your perspective on what it means to be human. It connects you to cutting-edge questions in science like, what is consciousness? Can machines ever think? How do we treat brain disorders? Even a little knowledge here gives you a powerful lens for looking at everything from education and technology to psychology and ethics. If you do come to a point in this series where it's too technical, skip ahead. That's one of the beauties of YouTube. As I said, I wish the answer was simple and obvious, but it's not. I'll create a full suite of videos to explain it. But bear with me, it will be worth it. Many of my observations are the logical and inescapable result of decades of neural simulations and research in the field. Do I have a good idea of how the brain works? Yes. 
Is it perfect and complete? Not yet. But I will give you the best answers available. I will make some assumptions and speculations, and I hope to be clear about it when I do. But the reasoning behind the answers requires lots of details to be convincing, so that's where I'll start. Your brain is not the only way to implement its style of intelligence. It's probably not even the best way. So as I present how the brain works, there are numerous features which could be applicable to AI, yet there are obvious things that can already be done better in electronics. An example is arithmetic. Relative to computers, your brain is ponderously slow and error prone at simple addition and worse at more complex mathematics. Making AI more like your brain could make it slower and less correct. One obvious area where AI could benefit from mimicking the brain is energy. Your brain uses about 20 watts. It's your most energy intensive organ. A MacBook Pro 16 draws 40 to 60 watts under moderate use. So a laptop could use two to three times the energy of your brain during typical work. Another aspect could be volume. Your brain with a volume of 1200 to 1500 cubic centimeters is much smaller than a rack of servers. For comparison, that's about the same volume as a MacBook Pro 17. Would AI benefit from creating human-like abilities in a machine with the size and energy requirements of a MacBook? Obviously. But here are a few areas we might not choose to emulate. Neurons are about a billion times slower than transistors. Why? Because brains evolved from earlier life forms, and those life forms have been great at developing and deploying complex proteins. Some of the proteins in your neurons are great at transporting ions, while our electronic components are great at transporting electrons. The electronic processes are about a billion times faster. So how does the brain compensate for using such slow components? By utilizing a massively parallel architecture. Your brain contains about 86 billion neurons. For comparison, the new Apple M3 Ultra CPU contains 148 billion neurons. Further, if you couple the CPU with 64 gigabytes of RAM, that's at least 500 billion more transistors. With transistors running at speeds up to a billion times faster than neurons, we must conclude that one, a neuron can do more than a transistor, and two, there is some fundamental difference in the way our brains handle information with that massively parallel architecture. Both of these conclusions are true. As I go further into the architectural differences in future videos, you'll want to think about which brain features would be useful to incorporate into AI and which are best left to us. I hope this introduction to this video series has whetted your appetite. Take a moment to join the Future AI Society for free so you can participate in our online conversations. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when additional videos in this series become available. And as always, thanks for watching.